Well, hello there, YouTube. It's Ro here. Thank you for visiting You Grow Ro. If this is your first time here, I hope you'll consider subscribing at the end of this video. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate you. Today, I'm starting my indoor microgreens. And I'm bringing you guys along with me in just a moment. It is finally getting very, very cold outside. We got our first snow today, as beautiful as it was with the big old fluffy snowflakes. Um, it was just another cue for me to move all of my growing efforts indoors. And so today I want to start some microgreens. Now I'm already growing some lettuce too, but microgreens have their place as well. I tend to like them because I can get so many so quick, but they are tasty. They are easy. Now I will be growing my microgreens in cocoa coir. You could certainly grow them hydroponically. You could grow them in soil. You could even grow them on husk mats. You can grow them on paper towels. There's plenty of other methods, whatever suits you, that's what you do, but I'm gonna be using Coco Coir. So why am I using Coco Coir instead of uh, soil? So, well, to begin with, Coco Coir is a sterile medium. Coco Coir is also something like 30% more uh, water retentive than, you know, something like peat or even soil for that matter. I mean, it can hold like 10 times its weight in water, which is incredible. Absolutely incredible. It also, because it is a sterile medium, is not super attractive to bugs because <laughs> there's nothing in there for them to eat. And besides it's um, a water, high water holding capacity and great um, absorption, it's also an organic uh, resource. It's made from uh, coconut husks. It's uh, odorless. It is, it has good drainage and good aeration, which promotes great root growth. and it's affordable. <laughs> Let's be honest, it's affordable. So I think this is a perfect candidate for, I mean, for me, it has been a perfect candidate for growing my microgreens in because microgreens, for the most part, don't need a whole lot of um, nutrition And in fact, I don't, I can think of a couple of microgreens that I add nutrients to, but for the most part, I don't. All the nutrition you get from uh, microgreens comes from what's held in that seed. And essentially, Because it's you're only, you know, a lot of your microgreens are ready in, you know, seven to 14 days, start to finish, you know, crazy, crazy quick. 
they're not even getting to a stage where they need your, your, your plants aren't getting to a stage where they need nutrition yet for the most part. Well, like I said, there are some exceptions to a rule. But most of them that you'd be growing, they don't need any of that. I think you guys have probably noticed that we are in my bathroom. Uh, and we are. We are up here in the bathroom because the floor up here is um, ceramic. So if I were to make a mess, it would be really easy to clean up. Plus, I'm going to be growing these in my upstairs office. And this is very convenient to that. It's the next room over. So I won't have to be carrying these any long distance. All right, so uh, I filled up my tray, leaving about a quarter inch of space because when I go to harvest these, I don't wanna take any of the medium with me. That's one of the beauties of growing your own microgreens is you know they're clean, you know what they've been grown in. And when, once you harvest them, you can just go ahead and put them in your paper towel come right across the top here to be sure you don't get any of that medium in there, so long as you're not pulling it so hard that the roots come out. All right, so my next step is, I've just found something with a flat bottom. For me, that is this, this container of Clorox wipes. I'm just gonna go around and tamp just a little bit tamp this cocoa quart down. My goal when doing this is to get a very level surface for when I sow my seeds. I don't want a bunch of peaks and valleys because your seeds will tend to gather there and you don't want that. You wanna get good um, microgreen density. And the way to do that is to make sure you have a level surface. All right, now that I've got these all nice and level, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of water on top of this. I could also do it from the bottom, but because I'm sowing my seeds today, I'm gonna do it on the top. Um, from After that, I will pull these trays out and water from the bottom. Now, any excess water that I'm putting in here, it's being caught in these green base trays here. Um, and this set is fairly old. I replace them every couple years, but I think it's probably been two, three years since I got this set. I just buy these off of Amazon. They're pretty inexpensive. Uh, you could even buy ones that come with um, that come with uh, lids, but I don't, and you'll see why in a moment. At least not for uh, my microgreens. I'm just going back around, make sure I got everything. Now, if you see something big and chunky in your medium, make sure you take that out because you don't want your seeds to be struggling um, to get a, get around those big pieces. Take those out. Break up any big clumps as well. Okay. So I pulled out some seeds for different things. 
I've got some Japanese red giant mustard seeds that I saved myself. I've got, we're gonna try this again, salt wart. <laughs> Giving it another go. I grabbed some garlic chives. I grew, I saved from 2022. I grabbed some radish seeds, had a ton of these. I also grabbed some onions. These are from 2020. That's why I pulled these out. Uh, they don't have the best life after, you know, a year. So. I'll be lucky if I get anything. That's where those extra chives are gonna go. And I grabbed some lettuce. Now, you'd be tempted to make yourself a nice um, mix, you know, with a little bit of everything in it, which is what I tried many, many years ago when I first started growing microgreens. And probably if you looked at some of my older videos, you would see where I've done that before. Uh, but what I quickly learned is that the reality is all of these things grow at a different pace. So, you know, when you turn it into a mix, it just doesn't really work out all that well unless you know they all grow at the same rate, then you'll be fine. But I know that all of these will not grow at the same rate. For instance, those onions are gonna take, if they germinate, I mean, remember those are old seeds, but they are gonna take much longer than say that lettuce and probably these mustard greens too. So we don't wanna mix those. And I'm just spreading these in an even layer, you know, with the color of these mustard seeds. I mean, you can't really make them out, but that's why I'm trying to spray from higher, or trying to sprinkle them from higher up, because you'll get better coverage that way. And we're gonna move on to the lettuce. Doesn't feel like I got a lot of seeds in here. But, yeah, I may need to go get another pack. The variety is Black Seeded Simpson, by the way. Yeah, this isn't enough. I need to go get another pack. And again, I'm just sprinkling these from up above, not too far up. Also, I should mention that you could use whatever seeds you wanted. You know, you could use peas, collards. different herbs if you want it to. I suppose really anything that's edible is what you could use. Next up, I'm gonna do the onions, which again are from 2020, so I'm guessing the germination rate is not gonna be that great. These are the white Lisbon bunching onions. It looks to me like a whole pack is just about enough for this tray, but again, with these being so old, I'm definitely gonna go ahead and overseed. So I'm gonna add, where's those garlic chives? I'm gonna add my garlic chives from 2022 that I saved. I'm gonna add those to this. It's 
2024, so these probably aren't going to have the best germination rate either. Wish me luck with that one. That's that's a that there is an experiment. <laughs> and in this last one, I'm going to put on one side this salt wart, which I have had a doozy of a time trying to grow. I don't know how many packs over the years I've bought, and I'm dying to have it. I did get it to grow in an arrow garden about what, two, no, maybe three, four years ago. Um, but that was the last time I got it to work. And I loved it. It's it's a green, it's salty. Um, it says it's considered one of Japan's oldest vegetables also known as land seed weed. It's perfect for stir fries, salads, and sushi. Matures fast and is long and thin, salty and crisp in flavor. It's really good, but it's so hard. I just, I don't, I don't somehow uh, create the right conditions for it. Like I said, I got lucky that once and I was hooked. And since then, I've probably bought, you know, five packs and got it to germinate twice. <laughs> I don't know. It's a persnickety biscuit. Okay. I don't know, but this time I'm feeling good about it. So we'll see. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to put some radishes and these radish seeds I got from Mike's Chaotic Gardening and because I imagine I'll need two packs um, Miss Shirley OG Gardner two of my favorite youtubers if you're not subscribed to their channel please do take a look at what they got going on over in their respective corners. Wonderful, wonderful people in the gardening, YouTube gardening community. So I'm just sprinkling those here. Now, and I know I said earlier I wouldn't mix, make a mix out of it. I'm not making a mix so much as I'm just using one half for one crop and the other half for the other crop. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my container again, press down, make sure my seeds are making good contact with the cocoa coir. All right, and I'm cleaning off the bottom so I don't spread the seeds into different ones. Do my lettuce here. Here we go. Do my onions and chives over here. My true experiment, because all my seeds are so old. I might get lucky. I mean, I keep my seeds in pristine condition. They aren't in, you know, fluctuating temperatures or anything. All right, and then here I've got my salt wort and my radishes. Okay. Everybody is pressed down in there. Give you a closer look. Don't know if you can make it out, but there's my mustard seeds in here. Here's my black seeded Simpson lettuce. 
Here's my onions and chives. And then here's my saltwort and radishes. Okay, what's next? Well, this next part may look a little strange to you, but I promise you this is how I do it and it works. And I'll explain to you why I do it the way I do it um, as I do what I'm about to do. Of course, there is more than one way to do everything. So you don't have to follow what I'm doing, but I'm just telling you this is what I do. Okay. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to stack them. Yep, I'm going to stack them. I'm not going to put anything over it on top of this one. I'm going to put my salt wort, salt wort and my radishes on top of my onions and chives. I'm going to put my mustards on top of my salt wort and radishes. And I'm going to put my mustards on top of my, I'm sorry, my lettuce on top of my mustards. Got ourselves a uh, veritable microgreen sandwich. <laughs> Now, on top of that, I'm going to put my remaining um, cocoa coir brick on top of this. And yes, it's heavy. Now, the reasoning behind this is, and they've done studies on this, microgreens grow better when they have weight on them because it mimics them being in the ground and the dirt weighing them down. And because you're seeds are so closely in touch with the medium, which again, in my case, is the cocoa coir, my roots are gonna easily move down into that medium and produce stronger, healthier plants for me. All right, so there is my setup. I'm gonna leave this like this and in say three or so days, I'm gonna pull these apart and check them. Now, they may have some seeds sticking to the bottom of each of these stacked trays and that's fine. All I'm gonna be looking for when I do that is to see if any germination is happening. Now, you could be thinking to yourself, oh my God, but what if you forget about it? It's actually still not gonna be a bad thing because these plants will grow strong enough to lift these layers up on their own. When I see that these have a gap in them, I'll know that these plants are growing in there. I forget the channel, but if you, I'll try to link to their channel down below in the description, but they routinely, and they grow professionally, they grow in trays, maybe a little bit bigger than this because they're you know professionals, but they've done experiments, many, many, many experiments where they grow their microgreens with seven to 10 pound weights on them. Those plants lift those weights up. All I'm looking for is to get enough growth on them. Now they'll be looking malnutrition, they'll be white and they won't look right but that's just because they've been starved of light. Once you remove these after they've grown enough, I would say, you know, a quarter of an inch or so, remove these and they will green up for you. Now, as for light, I'm not gonna give these any light until I see at least a quarter inch of growth in there. Once I see that much growth, I will then give these some light, but I may consider keeping the light higher than I normally would because I want these to stretch. I want them to get taller. That's what you want for your, your microgreens. I want them to be taller so that when I go to cut them level on here, I'll have plenty of 
you know, edible food on top. So you do kind of want them to stretch. But I will show you that process at a later date. For today, we're just getting these all planted up and ready to go. So I'm just going to take these, set them on a shelf, check them in the three three days or so, two, three days, and move on from there. So guys, I hope you learned something. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, share, and comment. And I will be back on another day with another video. Until then, happy growing, my friends. <laughs>